Hello, welcome to Electrify This. I'm back here with my mate Dean, and this week we are talking about full self-driving, in my case, supervised, and Dean works in AI, so you are in for a treat. Okay, Dean, you and I had a conversation recently where I was driving the Model Y using full self-driving, supervised, mm. and I was very excited, and I called you up to go, oh, this is what I'm doing. And I was quite surprised by your feelings about autonomous driving in general and your kind of journey that you've gone on. So can mm. you sort of mm. talk about briefly where you started and kind of where you've ended up? I suppose a bit of context and disclaimer, first of all, I do work for an organisation that we do a lot of work on AI systems and okay. build, build AI for... Uh, for different organisations and industries. But you're, this so, is in your own capacity to speak So about exactly, this is, this is my personal point of view on something that I think uh, could affect a lot of people quite personally in profound ways. And so it's really important that we get it right. Mm -hmm. Look, my experience with AI has been a bit of a, a journey arc in that early using the technology, I thought, wow, for things like vision systems, which is generally what we're sort of thinking about here when it comes to self-driving, mm -hmm. they are very, very good. The ability for AI to distinguish objects in, in imagery, whether it be from cameras or video, you know, single sort of frame photos or, or videos, is, is really, really amazing. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and it's been that way for some time, I might add. It's, this is, AI is, is not a new thing. It's been around for, for a long time. And, and we were building systems that usually were about identifying objects, whether it be sort of safety hazards in secure environments and things like that, or like, you know, could there, is, is that bag sitting in the airport for too long, right, that type okay. of stuff, <laughs> um, right through to being able to personally identify fish in, um, in fisheries, in harbours and things yeah. like that. And so you can, you know, two fish of the same species come past, we can tell that's Bob and that Jane, that's <laughs> Jane, right? And so really, really interesting scenarios. And so my view was, you know, a picture says a thousand words, that AI will one day have the ability to be able to take a lot from video feeds in able to navigate the environment. Mm -hmm. But um, my experience with AI has been that this is one of those things where the bar is very, very, very high and there's a lot of assumptions that we make in the way that even humans just operate in the natural world that are not conscious things that we can easily replicate in AI systems in vehicles. And so the ability for you to get out of bed, you know, go and brush your teeth, go and have breakfast, whatever it might be, brush it, have breakfast, go to the shops, walk down the street. There's a lot of things you're doing that you're not thinking about. Um, and when we're trying to get that environmental awareness into a computer system, mm -hmm. you've really got to think about all the things you're not thinking about, which is really, really hard in order to understand how many challenges a human goes through in going from A to B. Unconsciously. Unconsciously. And so it's not just about putting one step in front of the other. It, it's about sort of effectively reading the environment all that, all the time. Wow. And it's more than just road rules. Uh, Cars and, and, on a road, that car's there, that, that car's That's right. There. Like as, far, you know, as far as I'm concerned, driving on a freeway, that is a solved thing, right? Because, right. you know, freeway driving, you know, sitting in a Newcastle, even potentially following most of the roads even within a city, urban road. environment, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a lot of that is, is close to solved because it is very, very, very controlled. Right. But when there's behaviours of vehicles or things that come into that road environment that the system that has no ability to have a way of forecasting well, it's, its intuition well, around. Well, it's never seen it before. It's Is never seen mean? it before, and it doesn't know how to necessarily deal with it and always see it as, as a danger. And so whether a rock rolls onto the road, which is big enough to take out a wheel mm -hmm. or, or, or something, or there's a hole in the road, they don't always see those things, especially okay. vision systems by themselves. Right. And it's not to say that they won't be able to, because humans can obviously do it. But, but I would challenge that the human experience and even maybe the animal experience with being able to navigate the world is picking up a lot of other signals using other sensors that mm. aren't just vision alone. For instance, when you're driving, if someone honks a horn, that's not a visual stimuli, right? Yes. Uh, and, and so uh, not, not all the messages you pick up when you're driving from A to B are 100% visual. Mm. And also the human has the ability to really focus and, and direct their attention in places, whether they be inside the vehicle, outside the vehicle, they can also do a lot of sort of forecasting of, of situations. You can sort of sometimes see a driver and go, you know what, that driver's about to do a dick move. 
right? Yes. And, and it, I think one yes. day, one day, vehicles <laughs> may be able to read the behaviour of another vehicle on the road and see that something's not one quite right. One day they'll be able to recognise dick moves, but for <laughs> now, <laughs> is that person going to pull out? Oh, I don't think that person is I that person under that, the influence. That person has not noticed me. I can so, just tell. I'm going to break. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that that's actually coming out in the data that we see. Um, make no mistake. You know, there's sort of a few different schools of thought to the way that the problem can be solved. Uh, Waymo, who's mainly based in a small number of cities in the US, is, is taking a method of using lots and lots of sensors on a car and uh, in addition to cameras uh, and also a lot of mapping of the city, as far as I understand. They use LiDAR, don't they? They do use LiDAR yeah. and, and visual sy vision systems. Mm -hmm. so, so, so LiDAR, like radar, like lights imaging, detection and ranging. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's what it stands for, light imaging uh, de detection and ranging, that's what the DAR, DAR stands for, whereas yeah. radi radar is radio detection and ranging. So it can tell how far something is away by just sending those beams out. Whereas with, with a vision system, you've got to do some sort of stereoscopic transposition from the different orientation of things to work out whether they're closer or further away. Right. So the, the way Tesla does it is to only use cameras. Yes. And if you're only using cameras, it, you know, conventional wisdom might say, oh, but humans only have two eyes and they can navigate the world quite safely. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, humans have been doing that for a very, very long time and have that intuition. Like, like a, a child can learn to walk within mm -hmm. two years. Where 10 years or close to 10 years into Tesla's building, or even longer when it comes to other companies trying to build autonomous vehicle systems mm. and they still haven't sold it yet. Mm. Right? And so there's something that, what we're seeing in the re research fields of AI, there's something that biological systems are doing much better and a lot AI simpler. AI isn't human. <laughs> AI is not human. It's a copy so, so I think just to sort of say, use the reference, uh, this is the, 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 the sort of the error here is to think, oh, just because humans have two eyes, but I can put 10 of them on a car and suddenly have better vision is a mistake because the wiring that's behind the eye is obviously doing a lot of tricks yeah. that we don't really understand how it's they work. It's judging new information. We, know, we can judge new information and go, okay, I'm going to make a call here. Is that safe? I'll give you an example. I was using full self-driving to find the Tuggera superchargers and on the driveway to the home co center where you've got to go in and go through the car park and go up to the roof, they, have ob they had obviously just changed that little driveway. They'd done some curb extensions and they put a little island in the middle. And I don't know, I must have been maybe one of the very first Teslas to go through there because I can tell you right now, the steering wheel went, <laughs> it did not, it, do I go left or do I go right? It, it, it was like it was making the decision of, I don't know what to do here. Right and mm, I, had to, mm. I had to grab the wheel and brake and then I steered in because it just didn't know. It had never seen that before mm. and it just didn't know what to do. But see, and that's, that's the interesting thing. The, the, the challenge, the problems that we're seeing the systems make are ones that humans would definitely not make. Correct. Right? And so and it's, it's, not, it's not all about, oh, uh, many, many years ago, I think UTS or UNSW had a, a, an experiment where they said, okay, humans, try and work out these weird paradoxes. If your car had to make a choice between, between driving over the dog and driving over the old grandmother, which one would you choose? And they progressively got harder and, that, uh, harder, and harder. It is not the, the problems that you navigate as a human every day and don't even think about are actually yeah. way more nuanced than that. They're not the big challenges, and all the big challenges are largely solved ones. And so just because someone says, oh, but they've got this special hook turn in Melbourne and, and there's this special inter intersection on a weird roundabout down in Sutherland Shire or something, all of those are known difficult situations that mm. we tell the AI to do, and it does them better than humans do. So just using the high bar for humans... And, and, and saying that's the high bar for AI is, is the actually same an error. That's not, that's, that is not the same bar. It's, mm. it's a very, very different bar. The high bar for AI is the dumb, boring, simple thing that Edge you intuitively... Thing. Yep. <laughs> and so and what we see is you know, Waymo had a situation where a vehicle... And Waymo, by the way, they're, as far as statistics, their statistics are they've had less accidents than humans. Okay. So they're, they're actually in the places where they operate... They, based on the base, this is being very careful about the way I say this, with the data that they share, yeah. and every company shares data a different way, yeah. the data they share, they're showing that they are safer. It's safer to be in a Waymo than being a vehicle that's driven by a human. Unless someone puts a cone over So I've caveated camera. that. I've implied <laughs> that a lot of caveats. Well, that's right. Unless someone blocks, you know, puts a bit of mud on the sensors. And so... But, but what we are hearing from the field is there was a well-known cat that everyone loved that a Waymo drove over and just kept driving, and a human would not have done that. 
there, there was a case where Waymo drove into an intersection where there was a police operation taking place that you would have stopped k's ago when you saw, saw the saw flashing the lights. Yep. There's videos everywhere of Teslas running into vehicles that are overturned. And so they're not in the training data yeah. because humans, when they're driving around from A to B and not driving into these things, they don't know not to drive also in Also on that road that they've been on previously, that object hasn't been sitting there. It's the first time you've come across. Plus you're travelling potentially at speed. So that split second decision that we as humans make, mm. I mean, I know AI obviously can make split second decisions, but if it's not encountered it before, then... But then there's the, the point of they get good enough for you to be complacent. Oh, yeah, because I was sitting there. My hands were on my lap and my feet were on the floor. They were, I wasn't hovering by the, on the steering wheel or over. I just felt so comfortable because it actually mm. felt weirdly normal. And that actually surprised me because I am quite a sceptic of this stuff. And I was like, I feel really relaxed. I feel like I'm watching myself drive. And I was looking. I was doing my head checks for mirrors and all that stuff. And that is probably one of the most relaxing journeys other than when, when I actually and, had to make interventions. Yeah. Coming up to Newcastle, it was, I was actually and I remember much my, more refreshed. I, I, I totally agree with that. Like, as, as, a, as a system to remove fatigue from driving, mm. excellent. I love, I love my autopilot as far as that. You just those, those boring roads that would drive you to sleep anyway yeah. are, are easier, easier now. Yeah. Um, and, and potentially in those situations, it is improving the safety because it's going to, because as you are in a more relaxed state, mm. if a vehicle stops ahead and you didn't notice because just you'd be, you're human for a second and got distracted, mm. uh, it, it does, you know, it, it does set. And so I think, you know, it, where the system is being an, ass, an assistant and it's done in a way which is Supervised. Friendly, yeah, <laughs> it's, right, it's being an assistant to you. It's being a co-pilot. Yeah. And, it, and it's able to have your back when you don't have your back. That is a, a safer environment, mm. but it's where... But, that, but that's not where they're going with it. They want you to be able to sit in the back seat and be on your laptop or doing whatever, doing work, right? They, yeah. they want... The, they're moving to that. And one day we will get there. I just think... Uh, I think ambition as it being something that's going to happen next week is not, is not the case. Do you, can you give a, um, a prediction roughly? I, I think, think I'll be very surprised if we see full, auto, full general autonomy. Like, I think what Waymo's doing is, if you want it now, you've, you want to do it the way that Waymo's doing it. Yep. It's going to be cheaper. Once, once AI is solved through cameras, that'll be a more, the more scalable system because you don't have to have as much hardware, right? Right. But that is the hard, much, much, much harder problem. And there's a lot more of that stuff we were just talking about that's going to come up in the, you know, there's going to be a lot more accidents where they just, no idiot would have had that accident before, so right? So four, five, and ten so years, what do you think? I think, I, you know, I'd get into a Waymo where they're operating because where they're operating, they've already set the bar really high and the system has a much more intimate knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't be a small animal walking in, out in front of an Waymo. I wouldn't, you know, mm. want to be going down a back street in a Waymo. Or a um, dog. Yeah, or a street without lines for that matter. <laughs> oh, really? uh, I, I think the more general scenario uh, is, is at least five years away. Okay, interesting. Yeah. There you go. And I think when it happens, there won't be any money in it. I'm going to say that. I'm going to go record to say that. This is it. AI is going to be a general technology that everyone's going to have access to, and it won't be easy to make money out of it. If anything, mm. the companies that are operating AI, um, if you're, if you've got an, imagine if you've got an autom autonomous cab. All we need is a company to build an autonomous robot who will drive your car that's not autonomous. That's a 19... 82 Corolla, yeah. right? And, and suddenly your 82 Corolla is an autonomous vehicle. So it, as soon as everyone has their own walking, talking assistant that can get in a car and drive for them, mm. there's no money in cyber cabs. But also you're all competing with each other then mm. and it'll just get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Yeah. So it's, it, it, what about it these billion-dollar AI, AI, AI industries that AI, people are yeah. investing in? <laughs> so, so the value, where, you know, it's the things you do with AI to raise the value of those things. Right. And that's, it's the things you couldn't do before. And that's the industries I work in. I work with organisations to do things they couldn't do before right. so they can do the things that their organisation's mission's about. If you're, if you're a, an organisation that helps, say, homeless people or, or whichever, there's a lot of administration and everything that goes into knowing you know, how you're going to run an operation uh, you know, distribute food and all those types of things. Get all out of the way so you can do 100% of helping the people and less of the admin. Right. That, that's the sort of thing that, you know, Save AI is time. great for, yeah. right? Or doing, you know, the, the Counting Fishes one was a, that I just gave as an example uh, in, in Northern Territory and they had grads watching fishy videos all day counting fish. That is most boring. No one wants to do that. Uh, <laughs> 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 now, now AI does it, so. Now AI that's can great. do it for you. Um, well, thank you. That is actually... I just want to, like, hug my dog when you talk about a cat. This is Bindi, by the way. She's not robo-dog. No, robo-dog. Um, sorry, Bindi. You just were really relaxed then. Sorry, I apologise. Um, thank you, Dean. That was fascinating. 
Yeah. Wasn't too techy. AI, full self-driving supervised, do we need it? That's a bit of a philosophical question, isn't it? There's do a lot of things we probably it? don't need. Will it make us bad drivers? Do, do we need it? Anyway, we can... <laughs> what do you think in the comments? Leave a message there's, in the comments. Show me in the comments. I'm sure there's a lot of geeks out there just want it because you can. Yeah. But then what are your thoughts on it? I'd actually genuinely love to hear people's thoughts on whether... What your feelings about autonomous driving, full self-driving, full self-driving Tesla's version of it, if you've used it. Uh, yeah, tell, tell us what you think. I'm actually interested. And, or do you hate it? Do you absolutely hate it? <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. All right. Thanks, <laughs> Dean. Appreciate it. There Thanks, you go. Sarah.